Hi guys, I wanted to give you some hints regarding your uh, gender discrimination project here. So the first four questions are about justifying that the four binomial conditions are met. So we have to be in a situation where there are two outcomes, a fixed number of trials. You need to know something important about those trials, and then you also need the fixed success probability. So this success probability here is very important. So an important assumption was made up here at the very beginning. Actually, this entire model hinges on this assumption. So you need to make sure you've read the paragraph at the beginning of this very, very carefully. So what this says is, if we assume that there are an equal number of fully qualified men and women for the positions. So let's say there are 100 fully qualified women and 100 fully qualified men. Maybe there are 500 fully qualified women and 500 fully qualified men. If there are an equal number of both, if that is the case, then the likelihood of a success, meaning hiring a woman, if that represents a success, then the probability of success in this model is 0.5 because out of our pool of applicants, half of them are women, half of them are men, and all of them are fully qualified. So we have an equal number of both. Maybe it's 100 of both. Maybe it's 500 of both. But a success probability here is represented by 0.5. We have a 50% chance of success. Now, understand in this context, we're assuming that we've hired 19 people, but we've observed that only three of them were women. So is that unusual? Is that out of the ordinary if there are an, equally, an equal number of fully qualified men and women? So we're interested in finding this likelihood. What's the probability that X X being the number of women hired out of 19. What's the probability that that is at most three? So we're looking for the likelihood of hiring three women or fewer women. That's why we've written it this way. What's the probability that X is at most three? So at most three actually includes three outcomes. So understand we are interested in outcomes that are three or even lower than three. And remember, you always start with zero. Even though it's unlikely to have hired no women out of the 19, remember, we always start with zero. So you do need to start by finding the probability that no women are hired. Now, this is going to be a really small probability. Actually, it's such a small probability that I want to show you. I want to set up the first one with you, and I want to show you what it looks like on the graphing calculator so that you're not surprised by what you see. I want to make sure you understand the notation that you're going to see on the calculator. So understand, this is the number of ways that we can hire zero women or have zero successes. Now, logically, what that means is we've hired all men. So what that means is there's only one way that we can have zero women. We've hired all men. Now, understand these values here, the number of ways that these different outcomes can occur, these values come from Pascal's triangle. So you should get Pascal's triangle off of our examples from a few days ago. We put a giant version of Pascal's triangle in our examples and understand we want to go to the row with the 19 in it because we are interested in 19 trials. There are 19 people being hired. Remember in Pascal's triangle, you also start counting from zero. So the number of ways that we can have zero successes is one. This is the number of ways that we can have one success. So it's important that you get these numbers out of Pascal's triangle. And it's important to remember that you start by looking at the number of ways that zero successes are possible possible. Zero successes, that's one way. So the probability of a success is 0.5, and we have none of them. So that should be the exponent on 0.5. Then we multiply that by the probability of a failure. In this case, failure would be the hiring of a man. So that likelihood is also 0.5. But if we've hired no women, we have to hire 19 men. So this expression, 
when you evaluate, it turns into a very, very, very small number. And I want to make sure that you know how to interpret or how to write that number down. I would also advise using more than four places. So you'll see here in just a second, let's actually put it onto the calculator. I know that you don't need to type it this way, but I'm going to include the one. You start with the number of ways that this particular outcome is possible. There's only one way to have zero successes here. Then we're going to multiply by our success probability, and the power is the number of successes. So of course, of course, I would hope that you know that you don't really need to take 0.5 to the power 0. You don't need to include that. That's just 1. So this is really just 1 times 1. I'm just writing it out because this is the way you'll type in all of the probabilities when you're trying to calculate them. Then we need to take the probability of a failure and we need to apply the appropriate exponent to that. In this case, we have 19 failures. So there's one way to have 0 successes and 19 failures. So if you press enter, notice you get the probability, but the probability is not 1.9. That's not possible. So this e to the power negative 6, that e stands for exponent. So there is a negative 6 exponent on a 10. This is really 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6th power. So if you take the time to write that out, if you take the time to remember the scientific notation, 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6 power. This probability is so small that if we wrote it out carefully, we would have to move the decimal six places to the left. So I'm actually going to do it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm going to write this really carefully. So there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimals before, rather five zeros, five zeros that are placeholders before we get to the one and the nine. So this probability is exceptionally small. So this is 0 0.0000019. Of course, if you wrote it to four decimal places, if you rounded it to four decimal places, this would end up being zero. So I don't want you to do that. I would offer that you're better off keeping seven decimal places here. So I'm gonna write it carefully. So one, two, three, four, there are five zeros, and then a one nine. So if you write all of your probabilities this carefully, you will get an accurate answer, and I'll be really honest, for instance, the fourth probability that you're going to find doesn't have this problem. The fourth, the probabilities uh, grow larger as the number of successes increases. I just want you to know that the first few are going to have this notation in it where you're going to see in the notation, you're going to see on the calculator this E negative six. That stands for an exponent of negative six on a 10. 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6. That's just the calculator notation for scientific notation. So it's important that you do these probabilities carefully because you're going to find the sum of those probabilities here and then I'm going to ask you, you'll have seven decimal places here, then I'm going to ask you to use that in your interpretation down here and it's perfectly okay to keep all seven decimal places if you want. I said at this point you can round it to four decimal places. That's more than good enough to see what's going on. So I just wanted to give you a few hints to get you started to make sure um, that you could be successful with this. Hope this was helpful.